Hello everyone, welcome back. I've done many builds so far, where each one are as unique and powerful as it can be. So now I want to add in some flavour when crafting builds with such designs like shown. Today, we're going to combine both strand and void effects for a new area of control and shutdown setup not seen until now. Using both Wishkeeper Suspend Effect and Dead Force Super Effect, we are crafting a build designed for cementing enemies and preventing certain types of enemies from escaping. It's a refreshing take with common dead for Void Hunter as it allows us to double double down on making our build stopping enemies from ever moving forward. Let me show you how to excel in this one area. To start you're going to want to have Vanishing Step where dodging makes you invisible. And then you want Trapper's Ambush where Quickfall or using your smoke grenade will make you invisible. I would say this section here will cover you in terms of reacting quick enough to when you need to get out of danger or need to rescue your allies. Not a lot of focus will be needed here, but the following options will be useful. A fragments used are Echo Obscurity, where doing a finisher on the target makes you invisible. Echo of Undermining, where Void Grenades apply a debuff. Echo Persistent, where Void Buffs applied to you last longer. And Echo Remnants, where your Lingon Grenade duration are extended. The Echo of Obscurity, Remnants and Persistent is going to be a must-have when focusing on the Hunter's Invis, as we want to make sure this is covered from start to finish. The Echo of Undermining though is a highly recommended fragment to add to the following build, as it will allow us to apply more damage as we play, but also allow our Vortex Grenade to do more damage while in action. This will be important when being used against suspended targets, as we can garner more super energy faster when all enemies are bunched up. Now, don't worry about the grenade cooldown, as with Tether along with the rest of the kit, it will allow us to improve its regenerate easily. For modern stats, it is recommended to have a high resilience and discipline stat, which will help with surviving certain in-game content you play in. Your mobility and strength will also play a part in the build, but they won't need too much focus since we have certain mods to help them. Resilience at tier 10 will grant us a 30% damage reduction in-game, which is important for the survival of the player and build. Although invis will help, having a high resilience stat will mean you'll be able to survive certain one-shot hits compared to not having a high stat at all. Discipline at tier 10 will grant you a 1 minute 16 cooldown when using Vortex Grenades, which are quite high to use and maintain. However, we do have ways to reduce its effects. For example, Having Grenade Kickstart with two charged up mods will grant us a 38.4% grenade energy return on 5 armor charges. Then we have Stacks and Stacks which will increase our Orbs of Power collection from plus 1 to plus 2. And then having Distribution will grant us a 4% ability energy back for all stats. Lastly, you then have your Tether that will not only really debuff targets but will also grant you ability energy back from kills made. So overall, your given stat with a high cooldown rate will actually feel very low once everything starts to kick in. Lastly, mobility, intellect and strength are low at tier 2 to 3 stat, and except for the intellect stat that uses times 2 ashes to as its mod, mobility and strength stat will have the bolstering detonation and momentum transfer mod to help with garnering their energy back over time. This is truly all you will really need for these. Now lastly, the weapons being used will be the Wishkeeper Bow. Testing the weapon in GM has shown it has good affinity with any ability user may have in mind, and the ability to proc suspend after full charge allows us to tie down unstoppable and mini bosses with ease. I chose to try it with a Void Bill so I can experiment and see where it excels the most in, as Hunter Void Trapper build is already pretty powerful on its own. Combining the two now provides a much easier way of fully trapping targets down for a 100% downtime. Heavy, I have the Breakout Osprey Adept with Bipod and Autoload Holster, which pairs well with the build design. The ease of use of me firing my weapon and allowing it to autoload allows my Tether to spend build to nuke enemies much more faster when required too. Although using another strand weapon would be more beneficial, as we can make use of the Unraveling Orbs and Horde Shuttle Seasonal Mods, it's still going to allow our build to do well even without the Seasonal Mods included. At the same time, it does free up some mod slots when being paired with the Void subclass, so there are some benefits towards the following choice. The core essence of the build is still there, and still as powerful as many people have remembered. However, by applying another method of trapping enemies, you can create an even more powerful version of the Deadfall build 
that we already used to. Our last Void build, we did focus on using Orpheus Rigs to improve the performance of Deadfall Tether, and then improving the energy regen we get from it as well. While this is still the case, we have made some changes to how much more active it has now become, and this can be seen from the grenade pick, and times 2 ashes to add its mod. The idea being that by applying Wishkeeper Suspend effect onto targets, my Vortex grenades after landing will build up the super meter at a faster rate, which means while in and out of our super phase, we can garner our super on a much more higher level not seen before. This overall is what's going to make the suspend and tether effect become more prominent as times go by, and the more enemies that get caught by it, the better outcome it becomes for me. This may seem bad at first, since you can achieve the same thing by using the following exotic with their own given subclasses, but I would experiment and see if combining the two opposing subclasses could create something new and unique. The results are interesting. And like I said before, it does provide quite a punch to it. In fact, the build does quite well for the majority of endgame content available, as it covers the key survival items needed for endgame, and it has good aerial control when dealing with multiple enemies, and it could also provide a huge DPS boost when being used in teams. On paper, it's literally a more updated version of the Orpheus Rig build we did a while back when using Wish Ender instead. And if you want something powerful enough to be used in the Cosmodrome GM, for example, then the following is suitable for that one occasion. I also forgot to mention, the build also covers a key issue when being used against most bosses, as now with Suspend in hand, this can either stagger bosses or make it easier to stun many bosses who have a habit of walking away from your tether. Outside of that one downside, the build excels in ways I didn't think possible, and I highly recommend you try using the Wishkeeper outside of other subclasses for more better coverage and more unique build styles. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared then please leave a comment below, while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like and sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, and if you want more stuff like this then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.